He's an amazing cook. No one is allowed to come in there and help with anything. The drinks are flowing and officials turn up rather pompous and self-important. By 10 o'clock that night, they're all sitting there happily fed and starting to listen to what Marcus has to say a little more sympathetically. Marcus always surprises me. He brings people together. There's a heart and there's a soul in the Serengeti, and Marcus is that heart and is that soul. Since the early 1980s, Dr. Marcus Borna has worked to protect Tanzania's Serengeti ecosystem. One of the last great wilderness areas in Africa, the Serengeti's endless plains are home to a highly diverse collection of species, as well as one of the most spectacular migrations on the planet. For me, it is very emotional to be still see the migration. And when they start moving, and you fly over them, and you see a herd of 100, 150,000 animals moving through the plains, it's just the most amazing kind of experience you can have. Borner and his team at the Frankfurt Zoological Society conduct annual counts of the wildebeest, working to keep their migration corridors open. Ecological monitoring is just one part that is crucial for Borna to manage the Serengeti sustainably. And we have a digital camera in the aircraft and that takes every 10 seconds a picture with GPS location and everything attached to it. We get a very good idea if the population is increasing or decreasing. Serengeti is a very positive example that conservation can work. I think it has actually gone from a state where it was quite insecure to a state where it uh, is now actually in a very good state and animal populations have increased. I was uh, one of these uh, naughty boys who had um, their bedroom full of reptiles. But I had no clue, of course, that I would ever end up, you know, in a place like this. From the beginning, Borna's work in Tanzania was fraught with challenge. As demand for rhino horn peaked in the 70s and 80s, Borna witnessed a 90% decline in black rhino from poaching. It was thought to be a total annihilation of this key species in the Serengeti. It was incredible. My first trip here through the Serengeti, I saw more dead rhino, poached rhinos, than I saw live rhinos. It was yesterday, yeah? It was yesterday. Yeah. And how far are they ranging nowadays? I'm in the home range. By the early 1990s, Borna had created a heavily guarded protection and surveillance system for the last three remaining black rhino. Since that time, the population has rebounded to over 30 rhino today. And to further bolster their numbers, Borna has taken on his most ambitious project to date, overseeing the relocation of 32 black rhino from South Africa. The project, a partnership between various Tanzanian and South African organizations, is considered the largest translocation effort of its kind. And in 2010, the first five rhino were introduced. What Marcus managed to do was find a source of rhinos that, that were the same as the ones that were originally here and arrange for that, have them flown in and then putting them in at three or four different areas. It is a heck of a process trying to get these rhinos up here. To organize the agreement between the two governments and have such support and buy-in at the very highest levels from different countries for, for this reintroduction was absolutely remarkable. Because of the rhinos and the rhino introduction, we got uh, more uh, equipment from the government. We have uh, more guns coming in to protect the area and so on. So it had a hugely positive effect on safeguarding the ecosystem of the Serengeti. In 2012, Borna stepped down from his role as head of the Africa program for the Frankfurt Zoological Society. But come to his home in the heart of the Serengeti bush, and you'll still find him doing what he does best. In a way, I think of Marcus as a guardian of the Serengeti. He's become trusted. That gives him an unexampled voice in conservation to make things happen within Tanzania. I think Serengeti is still a little bit in all of us. 
And that is what I uh, love most, that I had this incredible chance all my life to live in such a wonderful place where you still feel part of nature.